we are going to discuss about Ochuka. His name was Ezekiel Ochuka. He had a nickname called Owar. Owar. I don't know why he had that nickname. I'm not fluent in Luo language. Uh, oh, he was born in the early 50s. I suspect 1953. Ochuka. He was uh, of the rank of senior, senior private. Now, there were some changes in the military and possibly the police where we now have a rank called uh, senior private. But in those days, uh, in the army, there was a uh, private, then Lance Corporal, then copper and so on. But in the Air Force, there was uh, the rank of private, and then instead of calling somebody uh, a Lance Corporal, they used to call him a senior private. Now, if you go to the truth, he was of the rank of Lance Corporal, but in the, <clears throat> in the army, a lance corporal used to be accommodated at corporal's mess. And uh, in the Air Force, a senior private used to be accommodated at private's place. But nowadays, uh, a constable or a private who has stayed for a long time without being promoted is referred to as a senior private. So those days, a senior private was equivalent to a lance corporal. I will talk a, a lot about him, but there is always a question of why was he basically a constable? Why was he the leader of the coup? Uh, first of all, there was uh, so many coups. There was one of the reasons why 1982 coup did not succeed was that there were so many. Uh, Charles Jonja had his group, other people had their own, so you know, so, so many rats can't dig a hole. But we are talking about the coup attempt that was led by Senior Sergeant Ezekiel Ochuka. Uh, the reason why he was chosen, first of all, is that uh, military used to be overthrown by generals. Generals, uh, marshals, and admirals. And then uh, it came up to sometime in the late 60s when colonels, Kina Colonel Achempong, started overthrowing governments. Then it came, it reached a place where a flight lieutenant, a flight lieutenant or a lieutenant is like an inspector. So it moved from generals, went to colonels, then a flight lieutenant uh, Jerry Rawlings in Ghana. Then uh, Liberia, Liberia, a master sergeant, an NCO, master sergeant Samuel Doe overthrew. So there was a joke that other places have had senior people, in, including NCOs. Why don't we have the most junior person? Uh, that is why Ochuka was chosen. Ochuka was chosen because of the rank. Ochuka was also chosen because of two things. Ochuka was CMC of the private mess. In a military term, each mess has a committee. And the committee has officials. There is the chairman, there is treasurer, secretary. And so chairman of the mess committee, CMC, is very important. That is why whenever the president visits, let's say, Kiganjo, you'll find that the cadet, who is the CMC, is the, is the one who takes the president around while on, he will be on the president's right hand. And on the left... There is the inspector general, and the commandant is uh, the college commandant is 
five or six steps away. So CMC is a very important person. CMC is a very influential person. Ochuka was also was fitting the bill <coughs> because he got a division three in form four. Division three for eight four four it's like a C. You know division one is an A, division two is a B, division four is a D. And a strong division one was an A plus. A weak division two was a B minus, something like that. So he was a, a C person. He was taken and placed in the in the personnel section under SOA, Staff Officer Administration. So he used to handle all files, personnel files of the Ascaris. He knew who were rude, he knew whom to convince. Uh, he was also trained in London on personnel issues. So he was the best person to coordinate these people. And uh, why was he and the members of Luo, especially members of the Luo uh, disciplined forces, uh, uh, unhappy with uh, Moi? Before I continue, I want to say that uh, this is the type of materials I placed in my autobiography, but uh, I think I've not covered about Ochuka or even I've done. I must have covered it in, in passing because my autobiography is concerning my life in the police from the day I was recruited to the time I left, plus or minus. And uh, I joined the police in 1982, November 27th. So, Ochuk, uh, when Kenya attained independence, uh, two tribes ruled Kenya, the Luos and Kikuyus. In any strategic department, you'd find that the overall was a Kikuyu and the deputy was a Luo. Starting with the presidency, uh, he was, uh, you'll find that uh, Jomo was a Kikuyu Jaramogi was the deputy. The police, Kenya police, the commissioner was Bernard Njenga Hinga, Akikuyu, deputized by Michael Arum, Aluo. In CID, it was headed by Ignatius Nderi, Akikuyu. The deputy director of CID was Mr. Kola, Aluo. Don't confuse this one with the Joseph Mudamba Kola the long-serving and most liked com commandant of Kenya police because Kola was a lawyer from Eregi TTC. But this was another Kola who was the head of, who was the deputy director of CID. In special branch, the director was James Kanyotu Akikuyu. I cannot recall his deputy, but his deputy was a Luo. James Kanyotu, for all those years, never went on leave. It is only one time when he went on leave and the deputy promoted 25 people without attending the course of superintendent. He promoted 25 people from the rank of chief inspector to superintendent of which 15 were Luos and 10 were non-Luos. When Kanyoto resumed, he reverted those. I worked with uh, Ademba. Ademba was among those people. He was a, a Luo from Cabras. In Cabras, Malava constituents, we have Luos at a place called Kwa Okumu. Now you find that the director, director of a special branch was Akikuyu, Kanyotu, deputy was a Luo. Then in the late 60s, there came out tension between Luos and Kikuyus. A number of deaths happened, Akwin Kothek, Tomboya, so and so. So Luos were removed, and when Luos were removed, Kikuyus were placed there. So you find the head is a Kikuyu, the deputy is a Kikuyu. This happened until uh, 1978, when Jomo Kenyatta died. Between 1978 to 1982, less than five years, I think it is four years, more, uh, Kalenjins were being promoted astronomically. You wake up, somebody is uh, 
two ranks below you. Within two to three months, he is two, two ranks ahead of you. All tribes felt it, but Luos also felt it, maybe more. Then uh, this thing, that is when Jaramogi decided to overthrow the government. There is, a, a believe that uh, Ochuka was just a holding person, because if he would have taken, he would have handed over to Jaramogi later. But uh, for various reasons, Jaramogi did not want to show his hands. So he used uh, Raila and a deputy of his who was called Israel. Israel somebody, I can't recall the second name. Those were the people who were doing things for uh, Jaramogi. In such a way that when you visited Jaramogi, Israel and, Jar and, uh, and Raila would talk to you. And uh, Jaramogi would be there. Just listening after you, you have completed talking, Jaramogi would uh, then say, you have heard my words. That is what uh, his personal assistant and Raila had said while that was his talking. Uh, they opened an office at uh, Gong Road. That was the command center. Moi was aware, Moi was aware of the impending pro, uh, coup attempt, but he allowed it to go on. Most likely is that uh, Moi had a hidden character and he needed an excuse to come out. And that is why he allowed it. Uh, Special Branch collected a lot of evidence, but when they collected a lot of evidence, they could not prosecute the people. So it was decided that uh, a plea bargaining is made between uh, the prosecution and the military people who were suspects. And they really agreed and they agreed that uh, the, the, they should turn out. Now, the intelligence immediately informed Moi why it was necessary to forgive those people. And they were told that uh, the Attorney General, Matthews Guy Muli, would come and tell formally the President about the, 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 the soldiers who had agreed to turn against Israel. But what happened was, in those days, you had to approach Moi the way you handle a cobra. If you are not careful, it will bite you. So, every time they met, Matthew's guy Moli would be afraid of talking to Moi and postponed it. But Moi knew why guy Moli had come. So they continued until one day guy Moli had confidence to confront Moi. So he decided that tomorrow I'm going to State House. He had booked an appointment and talked to the president. That very evening, those soldiers were convicted in a military, in a court martial. So nobody would give evidence against Raila. And so that is why Raila was placed in, uh, in uh, detention. Uh, there was a joke. Whenever they would, would meet, uh, one day Ochuka joked to... You know those days, nowadays I see constables uh, driving vehicles. Those days it was unheard of. Uh, anybody, below the rank of anybody below the rank of inspector could not get a car. So Ochuka joked to Raila in one of the meetings that uh, I'm going to be the president and I'm going to be on record as the first president without a car. Uh, then he was told to look for a vehicle. He went around, looked for a vehicle. He found a vehicle that was being sold at 40,000 shillings. And uh, when they went to Jaramogi's place, they told him that. Jaramogi went to the bedroom, came out with 40,000 shillings cash. 40,000 shillings that time was a lot of money. Uh, there was a question of why they were buried in committee. Yes, some people have said uh, such people, uh, their graves would be a shrine or anything. It is partly true, but the major point is, in Kenya's constitution, 
uh, then anybody hanged in a, in a committee was buried there in the committee. And that is why uh, Field Marshal Dede and Kemadi is buried in the committee and all others. So the fact that uh, Ochuka and his deputy, his deputy was a senior sergeant called Prankas Otea Okumu. Why they were buried in the committee was because of the those days, if you are hanged by the government, you are buried in a committee. Uh, that is how the whole thing happened. And I am grateful to have been given a chance to explain to Kenyans about something that ever occurred in our occasion. So we could say that um, the fellow ruled Kenya for six hours.